Hey, everybody, we've made it through another week. Congratulations to us all. It is Friday's House of Games. We're going to give out this extraordinary trophy. So we meet our players. They are Kerry Godleyman. Hello. Ratsi Chinyanganya. Ebony Rainford-Brent. And Hal Cruttenden. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, Hal, you've won four in a row. Can you keep this up? Can you do the five? It's horrific. It's really, I've, <laughs> oh, I feel on. like it's the most important day of my life. <laughs> I just, I, no, I, I really do feel the pressure because it has been amazing, hasn't it? It's been so... It's been super, super close. But I really want the cup, which means I have to come second, I think. Let's take a look at the weekly leaderboard as it stands. Hal has a four-point lead over Radzi. Kerry, you have seven. Ebony, you have six. Eight points for a win today, six for second, four for third, and so on. So, Radzi, you still could catch up. The dream might be over, Kerry and Ebony, for you both to win the trophy. Ebony, you've spent your entire career in competitive yeah. sports. First yeah. as a player, now you're a commentator, administrator, and all sorts of things. Yeah. So my assumption is you'll be surrounded by people who will be taking the mick mercilessly that you're losing. This is... I mean, I don't have a good kind of form on game shows anyway. Um, and I think this is going to be right at the, the peak of getting taken the mick out. I'm not expecting a lot of love. So, therefore, double points. This It'll is my chance just to underdog... It'll be a Sneaky. good day to have a good day. Yeah. Would it yeah, not? Yeah. Radzi, yes. what a week you're having. Finaled many a time, but just you fallen just short. You keep getting so close. Can you just, this one final push? I think I've decided I'm just going to enjoy it. Exactly. Now, Hal has won four prizes already this week, Kerry, which is a little bit much. Yeah. He's won a onesie, he's won a wheelie suitcase. Things we've all wanted. <laughs> <laughs> won all sorts. Shall we take a look at what the prizes are today? Yeah. Yes. Here they are. The House of Games deck chair. There's the House of Games slippers, the House of Games eau de cologne, the House of Games doll, and the House of Games sparkling wine. <laughs> I think the bubbles would go down quite nicely. But bubbles you could get anywhere. Yeah, but deck, not with the, deck the House fantastic. of Games. Yeah, the deck, deck chair. chair for me. Deck chair, would really? Deck chair, really? Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Your whole house is peered <laughs> out at the moment. <laughs> um, it's been a brilliant week. Honestly, it's been a load of fun this week. And Hal, four in a row, which is very impressive stuff. No one's yeah. ever done five, OK? Are you going to be the first person to do five in a row, or can we stop him? Mm. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this, shall we? Friday's House of Games, round one is going to be... <laughs> Correction Centre, I'm going to read you out some sentences that are incorrect. All you have to do is change one word in that sentence to make it correct. Kerry, we'll start with you. So this sentence is incorrect, but if you change one word, it will be correct. In Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, Ebenezer Scrooge is shocked to receive a visit from the ghost of Bob Marley. <laughs> that would have been brilliant, though. We need to change one word to make that correct. Jacob Marley. So we'll change... Bob, Bob to Jacob. To Jacob. Is that right? Getting us off to a good start again. Kerry, Jacob Marley. Radzi, this statement is incorrect. Can you make it correct by changing one word? In 1978, the song Glandular Fever, sung in falsetto, spent two weeks at number one. Ah. Ooh. Is it... It's obviously not glandular. Is it night fever? Change glandular to night. Well played. Absolutely. Very impressive. Now, Emily, you've yet to score a single point in any round one. Yeah. What yeah. in your sport we would call a duck? You could be going for no, five No, we're in a not. Row. We're not, because you're going to give me a nice... Straight down the line question. Okay, good. Now, one of the words in this is wrong. Change that word, you're going to get your first round one point. <sighs> good luck. Football came home when England hosted the European Championships in 1996. However, they were knocked out in a heartbreaking semi final after Gareth Southgate missed his train. <laughs> train is obviously the, the off one, but I'm thinking, what has he missed? What does England always miss? Sorry. Was it? <laughs> Sorry, Hal. I'll just say no. But it was, but so Gareth Southgate was the coach, wasn't he? In Not then. Oh, no, 90s. Oh, I missed this penalty. So change, train. Train to penalty. Oh. oh. No. Oh. 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 Yeah. Oh, my God, this is Beautiful. like... Beautiful. <laughs> Lovely to see. Mum. <laughs> right, Hal. Oh. This is incorrect. Can you change one word and make it correct? The statue of Ronaldo at Olympia is one of the seven wonders oh. of the ancient world. Why well, do I think it's Athena? Is it sort of Zeus or something? I don't... I, somehow I think it's Athena, but I think it's probably Zeus. Anyway, Athena. 
We're going to say Athena. Is it Athena? It is not. Radzi. Uh, Zeus. It is Zeus. Oh, is it Zeus? Is it Zeus? Yeah. Radzi, oh. you get the points. Well done. Well done. For a man who's won four days in a row, the textbook error of saying it's either X or X. Yeah. Going for the wrong one and let someone else say the other one. That's true. Kerry, here is your next one. This is incorrect. Change one word to make it correct. Humphrey Bogart plays a gin swilling sailor in the 1951 film The Drag Queen. The African Queen. Change drag to African. Is the right answer, Kerry. Radzi, here's your next question. What word do you want to change here? In 2018, Colleen Nolan received an Academy Award Best Director nomination for the film Dunkirk. Oh, I'm going to hazard a guess that it's not Colleen, but I don't know who is, the name would be. So it could be a grandiose name such as... <laughs> That's very good. Let's go Susan. Uh, let's take a look. Is it Susan Nolan? Oh! Ow! It's Mike Nolan. From I Bucks think... Fizz? I just thought of a Nolan, <laughs> sorry. Uh, let's see, is it Mike Nolan from Bucks no, Fizz? No, I don't know what... No. It's not. <laughs> Ebony. I have no clue who the actor is, don't know the film, but I'm just going to change director to actor. Is that right? It was no. not. Kerry. Well, it's, uh, it, it's a bloke but I don't know his name. And he, oh, OK. No, I'll give you that. I'll but give you it's that. definitely the director. I'd say I'm going to just pick a bloke's name. <laughs> I'm going to pick uh, Brian. Was it Brian Nolan? Oh! I mean, you win an Oscar. Really famous filmmaker. Christopher oh. Nolan. Also did Inception and all sorts yeah. of stuff. Oh. Ebony. <laughs> OK, here we go. Just broke your duck in the first round. Yes. Really stuff. Let's see if we can uh, get Magic another one. Singles. Change one word here, please. Better known as the face of DIY, Beyonce Knowles <laughs> took a brief foray into the world of singing in 2017 and they even scored a surprise hit. I mean, that could be a quite a few things. I think we know. So you... you won't be giving anything away by going... Oh, you do know the answer. OK. There's a few things throwing me off here. What's throwing you off, Ebony? See if I can... Well, obviously DIY is just random alongside Beyonce. But then she so... took a brief foray into the world of singing. And she's obviously been around singing for a long time. So what do you think you have to change, Beyonce or DIY? Well, DIY, but... OK. I oh, know, I know. All singing. Um, okay, Ebony, I'm a time down. Should, should we time you out and have a buzzer race between these three? Yeah, let them go for it. Oh, yes, Kerry. Oh, Kerry, what? what are you changing? Nick Knowles. Yeah, oh, well change done. Change Beyonce to oh, Nick. Uh, I wouldn't have got that. Answer. Well done, Nick Knowles. Oh, you you couldn't work that. You yeah, really I was changed. just a bit like, I couldn't quite, yeah. Last question of this round, how? All right. What do you need to change here? In the 1990s, a reproduction of Marc Chagall's painting La Marie was painstakingly created as a prop for one of Benny Hill's most touching and romantic scenes. Um, have you got this one at home? I don't know if you have. Just looking at the faces in front of me, I don't think anyone here knows it. I just can't think of anybody beginning with his... Richard Hill. <laughs> Is it Richard? So change Benny to Richard? Anybody else? Is it's not a person's name. Oh. It's the name of a film. So you change Benny to Beverly Notting. Hi Notting, Notting Hill. Hill. Oh my Notting God. Hill. Oh, that was really that's hard. Really that's hard. really hard. That's really hard. That's really hard. That's the end of the first round. Let's take a look at our first leaderboard. Hal has won the first four shows, but he starts off with zero here. Ebony, you have one. Radzi, you have two. Kerry, three points. Well done. Mm. Round two on Friday's House of Games is going to be... All in the details. This is a pairs game. The player in last place gets to choose their partner. Hal, it is you today. Yes. Um, who would you like to be on a team with? This will be telling. I would go Radzi. See? That's going very giving. Radzi. Tying my fate to his. Uh, so, Radzi and Ebony, if you will swap seats, please. So, Ebony and Kerry, Radzi... And how? Now, uh, before the show, you did a little bit of work for this one. You are all going to be guessing a work of literature, but you're going to be guessing 
using clues which your teammate filled in before the show. We will start, Ebony, with you. You are going to be guessing a work of literature from three clues which Kerry helped us with before the show. Kerry has described a play, OK? And she's got three clues. Okay. Three clues for you here, Ebony, that she has completed for us. So according to Kerry... It was written by, according to Kerry... Oh, Tennessee doesn't... Williams. Doesn't help. <laughs> its characters include, according to Kerry, Stella and Stanley Kowalski. And... It was adapted into a 1951 film starring, according to Kerry, Mark Taylor Brando. Brando. I'm, I'm just transporting just it, into, it your into your head. my brain. I can't even think of one film. Uh, I haven't even got anything to go to. Should we time you out? Uh, would you have known the answer? Cat in a Hot Tin Roof. Is it Cat in a Hot Tin Roof? Streetcar Named Desire. Streetcar Named oh, Desire. See? Streetcar Named <laughs> Desire. Mm. Absolutely right. It's Stella and Stanley Kowalski, uh, Tennessee Williams, and Vivian Lee and Marlon Brando. Oh, uh, what am I thinking oh, of? A Cat on a Hot, hot Tin Roof. I, so, so, yeah. I think I've merged yeah. two films, haven't there I? That's go. what confused me. Good yes, news, that's though. what confused me. Radzi. Oh. Radzi. Hal has given us three clues that will lead you to a novel. These are Hal's three clues to this novel. Its heroine marries a man called, according to Hal, Alex title name. It's, uh, I assume you weren't allowed to put the title in there and you've cleverly done that instead. It's set primarily in, according to Hal, Wiltshire, I think. <laughs> 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 that three was words. Yeah. 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 And your final clue. It was written by, according to Hal, Thomas Hardy. I mean, there's just nothing. Nothing to do with these clues, just nothing in my brain to attach the clues to. So the book's essentially a surname. So we could just go for a generic English surname. I mean, it's not Chinyanganya, <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, uh, Johnson. Is there a novel, Hal, called Johnson? <laughs> I think it's Alec. Is it? I don't even know, that. I can't remember this too. Tess of the D'Urbervilles. Tess of the D'Urbervilles. I did it for A-level, oh, wow. so I can't remember a thing about it. Did you do it for A-level? Uh, Was it Alex she, Durbervilles? No, she married someone called Angel Claire. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's set in Wessex, and it was written by Thomas Hardy. You're quite right about that. No points there. Right, Kerry, we need you to find a... an author, please. Here are three clues which have been supplied by Ebony. He was born in the year, according to Ebony... <laughs> Old. Uh, the next clue is... I think give you a little bit more. He is probably best known for, according to <laughs> I Ebony... I can't remember what I put. Children's book. Narrowing it down. Mm. And a street in what, according to Ebony, is named after him? A street in Germany is named after him, according to Ebony. He was born in the year old and he wrote children's books. Hmm. And there's a street in Germany named after him. Yes. They might not all be accurate. <laughs> I can uh, confirm he is an author. <laughs> <laughs> that is I'm going to guess... to work with. <laughs> I don't know who he, he... Oh, you didn't know him at all? No. Well, you, you know, you must know him a bit, cos those... those right. One, of, the, one yeah. of those is right. Well, there's, yeah, there's stuff there's in there. There's enough that, in there, but... There's yeah. enough for me to work with. I mean, you'd have to go fairly lateral, but, yeah. Is it Hans Christian Andersen? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. That is Germany, fantastic. It? it was just that. Germany and yeah. children's oh, books, even funny. though he's not German, is he? Copenhagen is, Copen is, yeah. is, is okay, where the street yeah. is. Born in 1805 and best known for fairy tales, really, but that's uh, great yeah. stuff. Yeah. How about impressive. that? How? You now have to guess a poem, and Radzi has filled in three clues. So, what is this poem, please, Hal? It was first published in, according to Radzi, English. <laughs> English. Good answer. <laughs> it's about, according to Radzi, unconventional friends. Interesting. Could. Could. It's and right. your final clue. It famously features a, according to Radzi, ah. feline and bird. Is it the owl and the pussycat? Is it the owl and the pussycat? Yes, it, it is. is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes.
That was oh. awesome. That's great. First published in 1871, but in English. Oh. <laughs> so you're right there. <laughs> it's about a pussycat and an owl, and it features an owl and a pussycat. That this was works. very, very impressive stuff. That's the end of that round. So, oh. Radzi and <laughs> Ebony, if you'll swap that round again. I mean... Great. Well done, you. Beautifully done. Two rounds down on Friday's House of Games is how going to make it five shows in a row. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. Oh. Hal has one, Ebony has two, Razzie has three, still in the lead with four points. It's Kerry Godleyman. Yes, Kerry. Shall we play round three? OK, let's do it. We are nearly done here. Three more rounds to go. This round is in code. I'm going to give you a category. I'm then going to show you some answers, but all the answers are in code. It's a very simple code in that A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals 3, and so on. So you're going to see numbers essentially, and you've got to convert them into letters. Let's take a look at the first category. Cartoon characters. So who are these cartoon characters, please? How? Donald Duck. It's incorrect, I'm afraid. That is Redzi. Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck is the right answer. Well done. Next cartoon character. How? Wiley Coyote. Correct. Well done. Well played. Well done. Wow. Next cartoon character. Yes, Kerry. Elmer Fudd. Is it Elmer Fudd? It is Elmer Fudd. Well played. <laughs> Your next category is UK cities. These are all UK cities, but what cities are they? Yes, Kerry. Swansea. Oh, well yeah, done. Well done. Yeah. Swansea. Well done. Next city. Yes, how? Aberdeen. Aberdeen is the right answer. Well done. <laughs> Final category is sandwich <laughs> fillings. OK, what are these sandwich fillings? Well, you could put anything in a sandwich. That is true, but th it will be specifically things we put up here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is this sandwich filling? <laughs> Radzi. BLT. Oh, well Well done. Done. BLT. Last one of this round, it is... Dradzi. Is it Coronation Chicken? He's well done. done. Well there, Radzi. Very nicely played. That is the end of that round. Let's take a look at the scores, shall we? Two rounds to go. Here is how we stand. Ebony, you have two points. Hal, you have three points. We have joint leaders, and they are leaders by three. It is Kerry and Radzi with six points each. <laughs> Let's play round four, shall we? Today it is... Where is Kazakhstan? This is played on our tablets. What we're going to do is show you a map. Oh. I'm then going to ask you to point to various things on that map. So let's take a look at today's map. It's a map of the United States of America. Let's take a look at the first thing we need to find. An infamous prison, the setting for the 1996 action film, The Rock. Do you know the answer and then do you know where that answer is? We'll put that up on screen for you at home. Point to your television screen now. Where do you think that is? Kerry, we will start with you. Did you know the answer to this, or did you have an idea of the answer? I assume Alcatraz. I assume Alcatraz, and so let's see where Kerry has put that on the map. Northern California. Have you been to Alcatraz? No. I went, I liked it. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, it's like, a, like an old prison. It's very atmospheric. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah it's really spooky, good. though, I'd say. It was quite spooky, but yeah. in quite a good way. In quite a good way. Yeah. I served eight years there in the... <laughs> <laughs> Did you get out with something hidden in your shoe? With a raft hidden in my shoe. Yeah. <laughs> See, the advantage of having size 14 feet. Uh, Radzi, what did you think the answer was? 
Yeah, so San Francisco. So you thought it was Alcatraz as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's see where you've put that. A little bit further down California. Ebony, what did you think the answer Alcatraz, was? Alcatraz, but I put it, I think, a little bit down. Okay, let's see where Ebony has gone. And we're all in California, aren't we? Hal, uh, I said, agreement? I thought Alcatraz, I, I think I put it exactly the same place as, as Kerry. I okay, think. let's take a look at where Hal has put it. Yeah, oh, that's close. really close. But it is Alcatraz. It is just off the coast of San Francisco. Let's take a look. Who is closest and who has won the point? Oh. I think we have to give you both a point there. A point to both of you there. Oh, wow. Absolutely bang on. Both oh. San Francisco, very well done. We're looking for this next, please. The city known as the birthplace of jazz. Oh, my. So are we all harking back to the glory days of Alcatraz now, aren't we? <laughs> Radzi, did you have an answer? What did you think the answer was there? I believe it's New Orleans. OK. But I'm just not sure where New Orleans is, to be honest. I th Let's see where you put New Orleans, shall we? Interesting. Doesn't look crazy. Ebony, did you know the answer? No, New Orleans, New Orleans is my guess, but I just assumed south and I just went above Texas. That's New Mexico. Hal, did you think New Orleans? Yes, and I, th I thought New Orleans, I've got it very near where Radzi's got his. I think that's the right state. I think that is Louisiana. OK. And Kerry, did you think it was New Orleans? I did, and I've got it where they've got theirs as well. Oh, you're all in the right place. This could be the greatest moment in your quizzing life, Ebony, if you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it is New Orleans, which is in Louisiana. All three of you are in Louisiana. Oof. Let's see who is closest and who has won a point. Radzi gets a point well there. Well done. Very impressive. Um, last question in this round. Will you find the following, please? The spot where the Mayflower reputedly landed in 1620. Where did the Mayflower land? Mm. Ebony, did you know the answer? Don't know the answer. I just went, I know Delaware, there's a lot of ports around that sort of east coast and I just chucked something in there, but I don't know the answer. Let's take a look at where <laughs> Ebony is. Yeah. OK. Doesn't look too bad to me. Hal, what was your thinking? Well, it's, it's Plymouth, isn't it? And I don't know where it is, and I don't know if it's Maine or Massachusetts, and I think I've put it in Massachusetts. Let's take a little look. Where is Hal? I don't know if that is Massachusetts. I think it is Massachusetts. Um, Kerry? I think I'm right next to Hal or on top of Hal again. <laughs> I'll put it on the sticky outy bit, Plymouth well, Rock. It's best to be on... Yes, yeah, Plymouth yeah. Rock, isn't it? Radzi. I just thought... Where would I go <laughs> if I were yeah. found things to farther? farther. <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought it looked like a slightly sheltered place northeast, slightly inward of where those guys went, and thought that looks lovely. Let's dock our ship there. <laughs> that's inland. <laughs> that is that is that is inland. Yeah, that's on the Great Lakes. So it's physically impossible, which is... <laughs> I, mean, listen, I don't know what boat technology was like. And listen, it says landed. Maybe the Mayflower wasn't a boat. Maybe it was an aeroplane. <laughs> you never know. Well, I can tell you it did land on Plymouth Rock, uh, which is in Massachusetts. Oh, it isn't. But who is closest? Oh, yeah. these guys. I mean, that's bang on Kerry, isn't it? Well done, Kerry. Well played. Oh. Kerry Godiman gets the point. Very nicely done, indeed. Uh, that's the end of that round. Tablets away, please. One round to go. Let's take a look at the leaderboard going into our final round. Ebony, you have two. Hal, you have four. Radzi, you have seven. Kerry, leader, with eight points. Anything could happen. The final round, you know what it is. It is... Answer smash. It's mm. double points Friday, don't forget. Eight points for a win, six for second, four for third. Buzz in and get a correct answer, you get a point. Buzz in and give me an incorrect answer, you lose a point. Best of luck, everybody. It's mm. been a brilliant week. One of you is about to win the trophy. Who is it going to be? Your first category is... Famous Simons. <laughs> Those will be the, uh, the pictures. There'll be clues underneath. Smash them together. Which type of confectionery has a name that derives from a French word for good? 
Yes, Hal. Simon Le Bonbon. Is it Simon yeah. Le Bonbon? It is. Well done, Hal. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Kerry. Next, Simon. Pauline Quirk and Linda Robson star as sisters in which British sitcom? Yes, Radzi. Simon Birds of a Feather. Simon Bird, Birds of a Feather. Well played, Radzi. <laughs> Next, Simon. What is the American term for an aubergine? Yes, Kerry. Sorry. Simon Pegplant. Oh, I'll give that to you. Simon oh. Pegplant. Oh. Very well oh. done. Simon it takes egg. my brain so long to and get there. Eggplant. <laughs> Next category is percussion instruments. Those will be the pictures. There'll be clues underneath them. What is the name of the bear who befriends Mowgli in the Jungle Book? Yes, Hal. Simbaloo. Simbaloo, oh, Simbal wow. and Baloo. Well played, Hal. Wow. Next percussion instrument. In the musical Cats, which character is said to be a curious cat? No one? Shall we take a look? It is Snare oh. Drum Tum Tugger. Snare Drum and Rum Tum Tugger. Next category. <laughs> We're done. Well done. Oh. We are done here. We have two things to sort out. Firstly, who has won Friday's House of Games? Hal, Radzi, or Kerry? Friday's winner on the House of Games is. <laughs> Kerry! Right the last minute. Congratulations, Thanks. Kerry. Uh, you get your choice oh. of these wonderful prizes. <laughs> what would you like to take home with you? I wanted that deck chair. It's Hal going, I wanted that deck chair. There's <laughs> <laughs> really a guy with four prizes <laughs> now going, if only I had a deck chair. Maybe that would be the thing that would make me happy. <laughs> And I think I'm going to go with the deck chair. Yeah. Oh, I think you're right. Lovely, because yeah. it's, nice. it's, you know, in sit in the garden. Exactly. And... Kerry Godiman wins a House of Games deck chair. Congratulations, <laughs> Kerry. Somebody is about to win this trophy. Who is that? Let's take a little look, shall we, at our final leaderboard of the week. Who is our House of Games champion? It is oh, Hal by Hal, two points. Hal, Hal, Hal by two points. I mean, you've got to hand it to the guy. Let's literally hand it to him. Hand there it you to go. The champion. Oh, yes. Congratulations. Oh, well done, second Hal. every day. Hal Cruttenden, a deserved win there. I have to against champion. How do you feel? You thought you'd thrown it away there at the end. I did think I'd lost it, because I thought Radzi was going to do very well the last round, and uh, I thought he was going to win. I, thought, I was working it out in my head, going, that means he's won the week. Oh, but it was, but it was no, very tight. But beautifully done, Hal. Thanks all four of you as well. It's been a lovely week. Really, really enjoyed it. Thank you all so much. We'll see you again next time on The House of Games. <laughs>